Learn and play online. Forms of potential energy. Make sure you watch our previous video titled What is Energy first if you haven't already done so, as that introduces you to the overall concept of energy. You can find the link in the description box below. Now let's start this video with a quick recap of what we already know. Using the simplest definition, energy is the ability to do work. There are many different forms of energy, and each of them can be described as either potential energy or kinetic energy. In this video, we will be exploring the forms of potential energy, which include nuclear energy, chemical energy, elastic energy, and gravitational potential energy. Potential energy is stored energy. The energy could be stored within the object, just like the chemicals in batteries and food sources. Or it could be stored energy based on the position of an object, just like the position of the arrow in the picture below. The first form of potential energy we will explore is nuclear energy. There are many nuclear power plants around the world and they operate to produce electricity to whole cities. But how exactly do they work? To understand this we must first understand that everything in the world is made up of something called atoms. Atoms are the tiniest cells or particles that make up everything you see, touch, taste, hear and smell. Everything from the pencils and books that you use, the buildings and furniture within them, to the food that you eat and the animals that you see are made up of atoms. Atoms are also the makeup of things you cannot see such as air. If atoms did not exist, you and everything around you would also not exist. Atoms are made up of three particles, protons, neutrons and electrons. The protons and neutrons are at the center of an atom and together they form what is known as the nucleus. The electron spins around the outside of the nucleus. Now why is knowing all of this important? Because now that you know about the structure of atoms, you can begin to understand how nuclear energy is a form of potential energy. In order for nuclear power plants to generate electricity for whole cities around the world, they must release the energy contained in atoms found in a mineral called uranium. Uranium is a natural mineral found in the Earth's crust. On its own, it does not possess any kinetic or moving energy, but it possesses chemical atoms that stores potential energy, because when these atoms are extracted and used by the nuclear reactors, they transform into heat and electrical energy. Let's now move on to another form of potential energy, chemical energy. When different atoms are combined, they form something called molecules. Chemical energy is the ingredient that holds the molecules together. The chemical potential energy in these objects can be released and converted into either mechanical or heat energy. Mechanical energy is simply motion that an object has or the potential it can have based on its position. Heat energy is also known as thermal energy and it is when there is a rise in temperature and the heat generated is transferred from one object to another. These are all types of chemical potential energy. When petrol is burned in the engine of a car, it makes the car move. The most common type of chemical energy is found in our food sources. Eating food and drinking water gives us energy to be active. When molecules in coal and wood are combusted, that generates heat and light energy. And lastly, the chemical potential energy in batteries are released to make other things work, just like a remote control for example. These are just a few examples of how chemical energy contained within objects are forms of potential energy to be released and used. Moving on to the next form of potential energy, elastic energy. Do you love jumping up and down on trampolines? It can provide hours of fun trying to jump as high as you can or doing front flips and back flips, don't you think? Now did you realize that every time you jump, you are tapping into the released potential energy in the springs on the trampoline? When there is no one jumping, the springs are static, which means they are not moving. Once someone jumps, the springs are stretched and they take on a different deformed state and this is where the elastic potential energy lies. That elastic potential energy is released as the jumping continues, allowing you to jump even higher than what you normally could if you were jumping on the ground with no elastic energy assistance. If the springs aren't overstretched and broken, they will return back to their original shape. You can observe elastic potential energy in these examples too. When the elastic bands are being stretched, it has the potential or stored energy that is then transferred into kinetic energy when it is released. The elastic bands then return to their original state. It's not always when elastic material is being stretched that it contains elastic potential energy though. When elastic material is being compressed, there is also elastic potential energy there too. Take for example a jack-in-the-box. 
the springs attached to Jack are compressed when he is in the box, and the potential energy is stored there until he is released and jumps out of the box. So remember, elastic potential energy is when an elastic material is being stretched or compressed out of its normal shape, and releases that energy before returning to its original state. Now let's explore the last form of potential energy for today, which is gravitational potential energy. As the saying goes, what goes up must come down. This is made true because of the law of gravity that we have here on Earth. There is a gravitational attraction towards Earth's center, which is why objects will always fall down naturally and hit the ground. That means that if an object possesses gravitational potential energy, it is positioned in a way that if it is moved, it will be moving against the gravitational force and fall in a downwards direction. When you are at a playground going down a slide, you are possessing gravitational potential energy when you're sitting at the top of the slide. That gravitational potential energy turns into kinetic energy as you push off from the top of the slide. There are two factors which determines how much gravitational potential energy an object can have, and it is based on the mass of the object, as well as the height from which it is elevated. The bigger or heavier the object, the faster it will come down. We hope you have enjoyed learning about the four forms of potential energy that was explained in this video. Thanks for watching! Please remember to subscribe for more videos.